I want to thank Arthur Miller, Steve Happy, Ramona Bennett, and all those who have worked to organize this March the Valley and worked so tirelessly and persistently for so many years for the freedom land of here. That is an inspiration to his strength and integrity for over 40 years as a member of the American Indian Movement, as a defender of the people and resources of Pine Ridge Reservation, and for 37 long years as a political prisoner. He is in prison for us, for all people committed to environmental justice, to economic and social justice, to liberation, and to right to self-determination for Native people. We're out here for him. For Leonard's membership and leadership and aim, he was targeted by the FBI and sentenced to life in prison in 76 in a trial marked by gross misconduct by the judicial system. The 60s and 70s were a period of mass movements and hope that another world was possible. It was also a period of intense government repression, break-ins into houses, causing divisions among groups of people, false arrests, infiltration of progressive revolutionary groups, attempted and actual assassinations. The most intense repression was against black, Latino, Latina, and native activists, a group such as AIM and the Black Panther Party. Much of the repression was organized and carried out under the FBI's counterintelligence of Hohenthal program, which officially ended in 71, but never actually stopped. Whites who stood up for justice and in solidarity with third world people, or people of color in today's language, were also targeted. For example, I lived in San Diego from 70 to 75, was active in anti-war organizing of GIs and civilians, and community organized against police brutality and developers from an anti-capitalist perspective. I was targeted by the FBI and San Diego police and Nixon's Watergate team by being shot at, many arrests on false charges, imprisonment, losing my job, and heavy infiltration by the FBI and police agencies. I was a victim of COINTELPRO. I and many others in the 60s, though, have continued to fight against oppression and for justice. Let's not let repression stop us. It's important also that we build radical movements that cross the generations. There are as many issues of justice, injustice, and oppression today as there were in the 60s and 70s. We're living in a period of high unemployment. Over 20 million people are unemployed. One eighth of the white population is below the official inadequate poverty line, and the rate for blacks, and African Americans, and Native peoples in the U.S. is more than twice that. On many reservations, such as Pine Ridge, one half the people are below the official poverty line. One third of the world's population are poor and undernourished, although there's plenty of food to go around. More than two million people in the United States are in prison. Black. Blacks and American Indians are more than five times more likely to be in prison than whites, and we're supposed to believe that racism has ended. Who are you kidding? Hundreds of thousands of immigrants are deported to the United States or locked up in private prisons, such as the Northwest Detention Center at 16th and J in Tacoma, for the crime of crossing the border to work. Let's demand that all immigrants have full rights and to all deportations. Health care and public education are being gutted by state governments and the federal government who refuse to tax the wealthy, but have more than enough money for the military and prisons, but not for human needs. In Washington state, higher education is being privatized as tuition rather than public money covers the large majority of the cost. Corporations have rights, but not poor and working people. The U.S. is involved in even more wars and occupations today than they were in the 60s and 70s. There is an environmental crisis as climate change and environmental disruption are happening as we speak. At the Evergreen State College where I teach, the 55 student support staff have formed a union. They are demanding to be treated with respect and not be fired without cause. They are going to go on strike the next 10 days if their demands are not met. Let's support them before and if they strike as their struggle is an important one for all of us. It's a part of the struggle for all workers to be treated with respect. Their victory will be a step towards revitalized and combative and democratic labor movement in Washington State. Our society can't go on as we've been with a capitalist economic system that sees human beings and the earth as things to be exploited for profits. 
a system based on war that's more and more dysfunctional for the great majority of people of the globe and the U.S., where inequality of income and wealth is growing daily under Republicans and Democrats. A system unsustainable for the earth is one that supports gay and lesbian and trans liberation, that struggles against poverty and, and housing foreclosures, that stops people being displaced in their land, that targets capitalism as the cause of these interrelated forms of oppression. Let's fight the power and struggle in ways big and small for a different society, for what I would call participatory socialism, where human needs are put at the center, where everyone has meaningful work, healthy food, free education, quality med medical care and housing, where cultural diversity and equality and self-determination are the reality, not meaningless rhetoric, where people have the power and corporate capitalist power is ended. It's not that complicated. We can do it. See, support they. In struggling for liberation and revolutionary change and building social movements, we must never forget our political prisoners. I'm proud to say that Evergreen State College, where I teach, as a result of student organizing, selected Leonard Peltier as a graduation speaker in 1993. And he gave an inspiring speech uh, that he gave to people while he was in prison. And Mumia Abu Jamal as graduation speaker in 2000. Leonard's health is not good. I urge you to demand his clemency and freedom and get, get groups you know to support this righteous request for his freedom and ask your friends, neighbors, fellow students, hub workers to do the same. The word solidarity is meaningless unless we make it part of our daily lives and organizations supporting political prisoners and working for their freedom. Relatively well-known ones such as women and less well-known ones such as women before a Muslim grad student from Portland who was sentenced to 18 years in prison in 2003 as part of the phony war on terror. He committed no crime. Many thousands are targeted today for being Arab, for being Muslim. Learn about Lamont Ford's case. Check out the Jericho movement to learn about political prisoners and the campaign for freedom and amnesty. End the incarceration of immigrants and most prisoners. Close the special housing units and solitary confinement. Stop the inhumane condition of prisoners. Three Leonard Peltier, three Mumia Abu Jamal, three all political prisoners. Power to the people. Thank you.